Hello friends, good morning and welcome to the EduSat Network. Our topic of discussion is part of our ongoing series on great liter literary texts and friends today we specifically talk about Shakespeare's Hamlet and uh, friends to talk about this we have in the studio our subject expert Dr. Anand Prakash, retired professor of English, University of Delhi and he is also the chief editor of the Journal of Drama Studies and the Journal of uh, Literature Studies both being international journals and uh, friends with this brief introduction I welcome sir to the studio. So thank you for coming. Thanks, Uroshi, <coughs> and uh, welcome viewers. Uh, today's topic, as Uroshi has announced, is Shakespeare's Hamlet, and uh, Hamlet has a special place, uh, you know, in world literature. Uh, Hamlet is very popular in India, and uh, I think I told you in one of the earlier discussions also that Hamlet has evoked such great interest in literary circles that there has been a magazine coming from India, uh, which is titled. Uh, Hamlet Studies and uh, that magazine uh, lasted for 25 years which was a great tribute to Shakespeare, the writer of Hamlet. Uh, <coughs> well, uh, I start with a general statement uh, and uh, that is that Hamlet seems to me at least to be closest to the modern times. Even though it was composed in the uh, early years of the 17th century, uh, 1603, 1604, that's the time of its composition and presentation. Uh, yet, uh, 400 years later, more than 400 years later, if we have to relate to one text <coughs> that Shakespeare wrote, that text would be Hamlet. And there are different reasons for this. We'll keep this particular theme statement in mind that Hamlet seems to be very particularly relevant to our situations, to our concerns, to our times. And uh, all that I say uh, should, you know, fall under the, uh, you know, perspective of uh, this statement. I start with the <coughs> this general statement, and I, then I go over to the next one, uh, which merely explains, uh, you know, uh, what, what I said in the beginning, that it's a play with multiple discourses, the same as is true about us in the 21st century. We have a large number of discourses, and uh, Shakespeare in this play is able to present uh, many discourses because of which there is no agreement on this text regarding its meaning, regarding its thematic relevance, regarding its closeness to human life, reg uh, regarding its you know, uh, character of ideology, etc., etc. So uh, <coughs> which are these multiple discourses? Uh, if, if one has to count them, uh, there will be many more than I would count, but then the major ones that I have in mind are, for instance, politics and the state. This is one discourse. The second discourse would be the family. The third would be the generation of the youth. The fourth would be the human individual. The fifth would be areas of society outside the plot. And uh, then last one that I have in, in, in my list is the layers of themes in the play. So imagine so much has been squeezed into this play and it has been specifically presented as a combination of all these elements, all these factors, uh, all these themes because of which in one way or the other the audience gets a kind of appeal from this play uh, that is not possible in the case of other plays written by Shakespeare. So I start with the first discourse uh, that is there uh, as a predominant discourse in the play and that is the political discourse. There is politics in the play, there is a political vision in the play, there is a critique of the political structure in the play. There is also a very, uh, you know, uh, detailed uh, uh, representation of the uh, things that state is supposed to do. And uh, it's not merely a king, it's also the state. So let's see, uh, because the, the plot line also is uh, revolving around uh, the state, so, uh, so far as the state part is concerned, the politics part is concerned, uh, the play starts with a reference to, uh, you know, uh, a new king taking over the country Denmark, and uh, this new king is surrounded by controversies. Uh, people are discussing uh, in, in their homes, on the streets, etc., in whispers, that this perhaps is not the king that they deserved, this is not the king uh, who is legitimate. He can also be called one, you know, who conspired against the earlier king. 
uh, got him killed and then you know married his wife and assumed the throne so if this kind of a you know a, a, a statement is made right in the beginning by the by the characters in the first scene itself directly or indirectly that shows that uh, shakespeare is basically uh, talking about uh, the the behavior of the king in the present circumstances the plot line goes like this that this king takes over and uh, well he has to face indirectly the presence of the very telling presence of a person called hamlet hamlet who is the son of the uh, previous king uh, who died in mysterious circumstances so hamlet is there in the play hamlet is there in denmark hamlet was uh, at the time of his father's death away from the country but then he came back and then he he stays on here and the tussle begins the very moment uh, hamlet you know steps into the country so uh, we have the king all the time in constant conflict with uh, the, the king uh, and uh, you know the, the two uh, are keeping a watch uh, on, on each other and uh, hamlet has got this uh, inkling and then that is being proved more and more as the as the play unfolds that the king actually is the murderer but hamlet has to be sure first so that he can take some action against him and uh, towards the end when the two confront each other and hamlet has the proof of of a sort that that that, that this person was the murderer then the conflict you know uh, intensifies and at the end of which both king claudius and hamlet die and uh, the the death uh, closes uh, the, the 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 play and one can say that uh, the, the play is a kind of a tragedy because you know it it went on from one point where the conflict began to the to, to the last point where the two adversaries the king and 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 is uh, you know uh, opposite and the person who stood opposite to him both of them die so this this is what the plot line is and uh, in the middle of this in the middle of these two points uh, from 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 where hamlet enters the scene and when he dies etc there are large number of processes uh, that are seen uh, the king is uh, always keeping a watch on on the on the movements of the of, of, of the uh, of of uh, his, his foster son because uh, uh, hamlet's mother has been now married to king claudius and uh, the mother is involved in the uh, conflict all the time and uh, uh, the, the king uh, is having sleepless nights and he is also feeling guilty inside himself and hamlet of course is more or less totally distraught and uh, in order to you know avoid that uh, there is a kind of disturbance in him he also assumes the identity of a mad person which in uh, uh, the play is supposed to be antic disposition he assumes uh, antic disposition the, the 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 stance of the mad person because of which you know he is able to confuse uh, the 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 uh, the, the uh, uh, characters in the play and uh, till the end you know the the, the king is uh, thinking whether the, this person is talking sanely whether he is talking seriously or whether he is uh, only commenting on things half seriously so this is the plot and uh, since it's a it's a kind of a, a conflict uh, between two adversaries in the play so one can say that they are playing tricks with each other there are references to other countries also there there, there is a reference to you know uh, denmark uh, apart from denmark norway there is a reference to england hamlet is supposed to be sent to england he is on the way but then he comes back and uh, so it's a kind of international uh, arena uh, you know in which this kind of political battle is being fought and uh, there are two or three kings who are in constant touch with each other and uh, the, the king is uh, well telling the court uh, using certain other people wrongly right, uh, wrongly mostly uh, against the king he is spreading rumors then he also sets Uh, a, a very big dignitary of the state uh, called polonius after hamlet to keep watch on him and that person is willingly uh, being of service to the king so this is the political discourse and uh, uh, there are lines like time is out of joint and i am supposed to set it right if time is out of joint then generally it has to be put back on the joint only through politics to right kind of politics and and, and, and political behavior so this, this is what hamlet says then you know uh, the 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 second in command that is polonius uh, he is in uh, uh, keeping a watch not only on hamlet not only on the king not only on the queen but also on his son also on his daughter 
So just see that you know politics and, and personal you know get mangled in this, but then predominantly the discourse is political. And uh, if Hamlet succeeds, then many heads will roll, and many people will fall, and 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 that that's the political implication of uh, Hamlet succeeding. So Claudius uh, sees to it that this possibility is is erased for all time to come. So it's a political fight between uh, the king and Hamlet. And uh, King is suspicious, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, he, he's uh, the target of suspicion of, of, of the masses. And uh, Hamlet is, uh, has a popular support among the masses, because of which uh, politics has spread actually to the grassroots also. So uh, with this kind of a plot, you have the political discourse uh, as a major one in the play. And uh, some people you know, uh, call it a kind of uh, drama, uh, where you know, uh, th there'll, be, th th there'll be scenes of fight, there there'll be scenes of duels, etc. Uh, you know, uh, and there'll be deaths on the stage. Uh, there, there are six or seven deaths on the stage, and uh, most of these uh, deaths, you know, can be given the character of political deaths. They are political murders. They are assassinations. You can call them whatever you like. But then, uh, politics is a game of, uh, you know, uh, different people uh, pursuing their own interests. And when those interests clash a bit too harshly, then people take to arms. People take to violence and they kill or, or, or they die at the hands of their opponents. So it's, it's basically a political play in that sense. And uh, you, you can say that you know, this political melodrama is being played on the stage uh, when, when, when Hamlet uh, is, is viewed by the audience. The second uh, you know, uh, discourse, because uh, the, the country requires stability, and uh, that stability is threatened. So political discourse is important. But then there are other things which are woven into the texture of the play. And the second thing is the family. Now, in politics, families do not generally perform a big role. Politics means, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the policy making, the execution of the policies, the implementation of the policies, law, justice, courts. All these scenes are there when, when, when politics is being probed by a writer. But in this case, all, these, all those things are kept out and family is brought in. Now, let's see what kind of family uh, structure uh, is there in Hamlet. For instance, you have a mother there. It's very rarely in Shakespeare that, that there'll be a mother active on the stage. Mostly, you know, the, these, these mothers are missing. Mostly, it is, it is a male-dominated world that Shakespeare is presenting uh, for the audience. But here, there is a mother, and uh, the, 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 this mother has become the queen, and and and, and now she has uh, got a new husband, and uh, then uh, she's also a wife. She was a wife when the earlier king, the previous king, lived, but she is the wife of the present king also. Then she has a son, and, and son is from the previous husband. So she will be acting on the stage uh, with Hamlet vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Hamlet being a son. Then there is a daughter, Polonius's daughter, uh, which means that Polonius also has a family. Polonius's wife is not there, uh, uh, and uh, but, but he has a daughter, and she's a young, beautiful uh, woman, and uh, she is in love with. Uh, I'll come to that later. But then there is a daughter in the play. Then there is a father in the play. Polonius is the father of a daughter. So father of a son, father of a daughter, father of a son uh, who, uh, uh, where the father is missing, and there is a stepfather. So these categories of relationship, mother, wife, son, daughter, father, stepfather, these play a very big role in the intermeshing of events in the, in, in, in the play. And uh, the, the uh, king is using the mother against the son, he is using the son of his deputy, that is Polonius, against his own adversary. Uh, well, the, the deputy Polonius is using his daughter against uh, Hamlet and, and in favor of the king. So one can say that the father is you, ma manipulating the attention of his daughter. The, 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 the mother uh, is, is confused, uh, the, the mother of the son is confused. So she doesn't know which, whose, whose side to take, whether to be with the king or, 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 or with the son. She loves the son, and she has great regard for the for the king because she doesn't know that th this person is a murderer. So that way, you know, the, uh, these people remain confused all the time regarding the stance that they have to adopt in the play as father, daughter, sister. Because there is a, there is a sisterly relation also. Uh, Polonius has uh, you know two uh, two uh, you know a son and a daughter duo. So the son and daughter, and uh, the, the son and the sister, the, the uh, brother and the sister, they also have a kind of equation. And that you know, adds to the richness of relationships in the play. 
So, uh, can politics and the family be mixed uh, like this in, 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 in plays as, as Shakespeare has done? I, I do not find evidence of this. You know, there might be uh, some dramas in which uh, this would be the case, but then here they are completely interwoven in such a way that you cannot separate one from the other. Then the third discourse uh, after the family. Sir, before we go further, just to interrupt you slightly, as you mentioned <coughs> that the discourse of politics and the uh, family here is uh, there is there, there is an intermeshing of events, mm -hmm. and there cannot be separated uh, one from another. Mm -hmm. But is it possible that the domain of uh, politics and the relation of politics and state uh, operates without the uh, say mention or intervention of uh, family members because it is the the kind of uh, politics that is happening is b is because one brother wants to use up the other brother. So, uh, is it also possible that they could be say divorced from one another and because I just also wanted to add that it is a very uh, topical idea as you said you know it is the most relevant to modern times and even when we see plays or films we tend to find similar uh, plots. That is true uh, and it is a very valid question you are asking uh, Urvashi and uh, uh, I can add another reason for in support of your argument that you know uh, in those days the king would always be from a family and uh, you know whenever the, the person became a king the prince became a king then his own family members also would turn against him in the 15th century and, 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 and earlier. So, that dimension is there, but here the family in this play appears to be as you rightly say that it is like the case that happens today, it is a family as, as if of the middle class. Yes. It is where you know the sister is there, it is a mother is there and mother is, is, is divided into two, uh, split into two parts. One is the mother and she, she loves her son at the same time she has regard for. So, you know all these things are very close to us. So, I would say that a family cannot be separated generally also, but in this case this family you know operates at a level where uh, the uh, goals are political right. and, and, and the reality is uh, emotion within the structure of the family. So, that is the specific part and uh, that is what you know makes this uh, play uh, particularly attractive for us uh, you know in terms of theme. So, uh, I, I accept your uh, you know uh, this, this suggestion that uh, this, this particular dimension is to be kept in mind and that uh, family should be seen as, as, as something that uh, is distinct as well as related to uh, the different you know uh, uh, sets of behavior uh, presented in the play. So, we can uh, the, the question is open and we, we, we can go further into it as, as the discussion proceeds and then I uh, uh, viewers take to the third point uh, which is regarding outside the family, outside politics there is a layer in the play of the youth. The, the uh, people you know middle aged or, or old people are quite uh, or are, are just, just a few. Polonius says he is supposed to be old, he, he has white hair there is a mention of that, uh, Claudius himself you know is, is was the younger brother of the previous king. So, he belongs to the middle aged category, uh, there, 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 but you know after that starts the, the, uh, and, and there is a mother uh, who, who is also middle aged, the, these three people uh, belong to one generation, but then there are sons, there are daughters, there are friends of the sons, there, there, there is no friend of a daughter except Hamlet himself. And uh, this dimension is important because uh, in the uh, 1590s and, and, and 1600s, uh, it was not generally visualized that there will be a category outside the family of young people, but this category is there that you know uh, they, they belong to future uh, in the feudal times and, and in the monarchical times also in England uh, the young people uh, of the of the families will not be shown as uh, you know generally uh, uh, performing a role vis-a-vis -vis one another and here they relate with one another for instance you know uh, uh, there is a kind of relationship between Horatio and Hamlet. Horatio is uh, age wise senior to Hamlet. Hamlet should be 30 years and uh, Horatio would be 45 years and, uh, and uh, but they are friends and they are such good friends and this kind of friendship generally is not possible uh, in, in the Elizabethan times. But then uh, Hamlet looks up to uh, you know uh, Horatio uh, as his friend philosopher and guide. Uh, whenever Ham Hamlet is in trouble then he must consult Horatio. And Horatio traveled all the way from another country uh, to, uh, to, uh, when he heard of uh, Hamlet's father's assassination. So, he rushed to this place and he, uh, he has remained in the play till the end, which means that the friendship is of that intense level where a 45 year old young man 
or, or, or middle aged man is here for the sake of a friend, for the sake of friendship. And uh, he doesn't bother about you know, hiding his identity. He doesn't want to hide his identity that he has sympathy for Hamlet. You see, it's, it's so very dangerous to uh, be close to Hamlet in these circumstances. Anybody, you know, will, will keep a watch on you. And if you are found uh, uh, difficult to handle, then, then, then you can be easily, uh, you know, uh, uh, done to death and all those things. So, uh, uh, caution is thrown to wind so far as uh, Horatio is concerned. And Horatio is all the time on the right side of, 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 of Hamlet. And this friendship takes the play much beyond the Elizabethan period or, 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 or the later period to the 20th century, where this kind of friendship is possible outside family. In fact, uh, such friendships also become critical of the family relationships. So uh, whom does one prefer, a brother or a friend? Uh, you see, this, this is a category. Well, then, then again, there is a category that uh, 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 you know, uh, the, the, the prime minister or, or the deputy's daughter uh, you know, is, 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 is a young woman and she is in love with uh, Hamlet. It would have been all right if, if Hamlet's real father uh, had been the king. Then uh, you know, the de deputy would be very happy uh, to, to, to be raised in status and, and, and to be you know, the brother-in-law of, 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 of the king. But now that the king has changed and this king uh, is, doesn't look kindly uh, to, to, towards Hamlet, therefore uh, the woman is gradually withdrawn from the scene by the father and also uh, under his instructions by the brother. But then, can she really withdraw? Because she, she, is an, uh, she is an individual, she is a woman. So she has a kind of respect for Hamlet. So on one side is the brother and father who want to take her out. But then on the other side, uh, the, the, there's, a, there's a person whom she likes and, and, and who has given gifts to her and she responded very sweetly to him. And uh, she is that way, you know, uh, connected, linked with him emotionally. So these emotional bonds that get formed at the level of individuals, at the level of the youths, this is one of the important features of this play. And uh, you know, once again, if you have these emotional bonds, where uh, of course uh, they, they, they go by the uh, uh, you know value system of the times, and uh, they, they will be obedient to their superiors. But then, if they are left to their own, then they would like to strike relationships outside the family structure. And this is what is happening in the play, that uh, you know, uh, you, you you are you are, you are shown, and it's, it's a tragedy. It's not a comedy. In comedy, the, 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 this uh, you know particular uh, paradigm is uh, uh, presented. But when in, in in a tragedy, these things are brought in, that there is a young man called Hamlet, and he is in love with a girl called Ophelia, a woman called Ophelia, and that the love is genuine, the, and the love is mutual, and that there is passion. People can be angry, and in anger they can take an action. So there are young people, there might be five, six young people. So one of them can become angry and then can start fighting with another. And the political is direct, the political uh, you know, uh, uh, spectrum is directly or indirectly affected by this. So this young generation uh, is, is quite uh, effectively present in the play. Uh, and, and, and they have their own views and, and, and the views can be critical. Uh, Hamlet, for instance, dis uh, disagrees with his mother. Uh, with, with respect to what he personally feels. Uh, he doesn't take dictation, doesn't take instructions from his mother. Laertes does, but then uh, he, he, uh, the, the, the father has to take care that, that Laertes is all the time uh, also uh, you know, convinced of the stand that he is telling him to take. So th this particular generation is there and this dimension works throughout the play. It once again starts in the beginning, uh, youth, youthfulness, love, passion, friendship, these are the themes uh, that are worked parallel to the theme of politics and, and, and family relations that I, you know, I have referred to. The fourth dimension. Sir, uh, I am yes. again interrupting yes, yes, you no, before no, we move no, on no, to uh, another Roshi point. is always welcome yeah. because that's, that, that's the way I would like to uh, make clear my points better. Yes. Thank you, sir. And uh, sir, as you talked about the presence of young generation, that not only within the family but outside the family, they are able to form friendships. Say Horatio's Hamlet's friendship with Horatio and his love, Hamlet's love for Ophelia. And um, sir, as I was reviewing in my own mind, my own understanding or of what I can recall of Shakespeare's plays, I was also able to see that uh, perhaps the, a lot of interaction that happens between the young members happens between the family whether it be young uh, say sisters or uh, brothers or cousins but usually we do not find a lot of people coming in from outside yes 
and and, uh, and uh, is is that a deliberate attempt by shakespeare in i think play? so i think so shakespeare seems to be uh, making these characters break the shackles of the family for horatio is not connected with them at all at, sure. the, at the family level then the, there are two people who have been friends as, as, as children of of of, of hamlet they are called rosencrantz and guildenstern yes and uh, they, they are not of the princely uh, background yes. so they are just there as uh, functionaries in the True. state at the moment but, but they are friends of hamlet hamlet sometimes feel very sweet with them later on he realizes that he, they, they have been set after him by the king and then he becomes suspicious and then of course in 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 in, in the course of uh, the movement of the uh, you know uh, play uh, they they also uh, get killed but, but then uh, they were friends most of the time hamlet is able to strike a very close friendship even with the players even with the you know, even with the actors you know who came to perform a play in front of him so that kind of you know dimension that kind of paradigm where uh, you, you like a person and, and 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 you start discussing with him and feel happy with him True. Th th this dimension is there in the comedies but, but here you know in in the very structure of politics that that, that is at the center if this thing happens then the, the, this draws our attention right. are quite yes. quite you know palpably then you know uh, <clears throat> another thing uh, I, i'm just uh, because the, 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 there is a paucity of time and i have to cover the entire uh, you know text from different angles so uh, uh, i would say that there is also the dimension uh, and a very very strong dimension in the play and uh, viewers i would like you to uh, particularly uh, you know focus upon this and this is the dimension of the human individual you see uh, in, in in the elizabethan period this individuality was uh, you know recognized and explored to an extent uh in 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 the comedies or 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 in in some, in some other plays also but these individuals always remain structured in the politics of the family these individuals did not come forward to you know present their own case uh, in a manner that they would stand apart from others so in fact uh, uh, one could not think till the 16th century of individuals they they always played some roles but they were something unto themselves they, they would look inwardly they they, they they would try to you know uh, go over their own problems and their predicaments that they will have clashes in their own minds that they would not be clear about what to what is to be said and what is not to be said and you know that that, that they will talk to themselves this particular tendency is used uh, in in great detail uh, so far as this play is concerned uh, for instance uh, if you one if one has to think of the human individual the person you know who stands apart from others from the group from a particular function uh, or in the, within the family or or politics now uh, th th this person can look around critically he can pass judgment on anything and everything and uh, he can also share his prejudices uh, his, his his misconceptions even his ignorances uh, his, his his confusions with the audience and and he can uh, say towards them well i didn't understand now this kind of a focus on the individual which became the mainstay of fiction and uh, literature uh, general literary enterprise in the 90th century onwards you know you have in, in the 90th century a large number of characters you know who have the psychological dimension you have in the in the 20th century a whole genre called psychological novel the, the, in in criticism you have the, the the theme of psychological realism now that realism the, the, that psychological dimension is rooted has been has, uh, shakespeare seems to be the pioneer of this when he talks about the human individual in the form of hamlet here so hamlet is facing battles outside himself with his uncle with his mother with with, with the supporters of the uncle and the mother uh, with, with with people in society with the functionaries of the state and every uh, and people on the street Th this fight he is all the time waging uh, with, with these people at the same time he is uh, waging a fight within himself for instance when uh, hamlet's father's ghost appears on the stage uh, appears in the play and uh, the, the father informs him the ghost the, the ghost of the father informs him that actually he was murdered you know uh, hamlet uh, uh, sh should he accept the version of the ghost and th there is a question and hamlet doesn't know how, how, to, how to refer to a ghost most people in the in the, in the uh, you know 16th century would straight away accept this because they might have suspected that the father was killed and then the ghost comes and they they, they take ghost as real and, and and they just go and you know uh, cut the head of the uh, person who uh, uh, committed murder 
And even today, you know, in the, in the 20th century world, etc., if one sees some, uh, if, if, if one person sees something in the dream and uh, that dream, you know, confirms the suspicion, that then the person's behavior is affected. Yes. But uh, Hamlet, when he sees that he had a father uh, who, who, who's, uh, whose resemblance in the form of a ghost tells him that he has been murdered, he starts doubting the ghost also. And in fact, he is, uh, at some point of time, he also raises the question, is, is it a Christian ghost? Is, 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 is it a human? Is, is it a ghost to his kind, or, 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 or is, is he, a, is he the, the very, very manifestation of devil? So a devil also can come in this form and, and misinform you and, and put you, uh, you know, off the path, off the track, etc. So uh, Hamlet starts doubting even the very uh, veracity of the ghost as a figure, and uh, he starts asking the question: Should you follow the ghost or not? This is one. Second predicament is. Should he be with the girl whom he, whom he loved, the woman whom he loved? Should he be, uh, you know, uh, with, with his uh, mother who may not be aware of whatever happened behind the scene and what kind of a person she has married? Would he be, uh, sh should he be, uh, you know, uh, following the dictates of the new king because he doesn't have any proof that, that, that the king murdered? And then finally, he starts criticizing himself. The human individual who starts criticizing himself is a different kind of a figure. And uh, Hamlet starts asking the question, am I right in, 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 in you know, uh, accepting the, uh, you know, uh, situation as if you know, it was a normal situation? My father is murdered, my, my, my mother is seduced by, by the uncle, and, and everybody, uh, the, 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 the whole world is set against me. Now, should I take action or not? And if he doesn't take an action, then he has to explain to himself why he's not taking action. Is he not guilty? And he, you know, uh, then he starts, uh, you know, analyzing his own mind. And uh, Shakespeare is using the, uh, uh, you know, the, the device of soliloquy, talking to oneself. So he talks to himself, and in fact, uh, the, this play stands out, uh, you know, for, for its soliloquies, for, for the mental exploration, uh, exploration of the individual who is sensitive and who is pressed hard by circumstances. So, in, in many places, uh, in many a place, I think six or seven places, uh, Hamlet goes apart from everybody else and he starts talking to himself. And these are the soliloquies that there are the wonderful pieces of poetry, uh, you know, in, 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 in uh, the display. And these soliloquies give us certain insights into the working of Hamlet's consciousness. So one can say that, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the psychological analyses that started happening in the case of uh, characters in literature in the 19th century onwards, those have their, their, their roots and their beginning in Hamlet's characterization by Shakespeare. So this kind of an individual who will look outwardly and inwardly, and uh, who, who will weigh the pros and cons, and he'll be th th then finally confused, and, and, and he'll have to pay for the confusion then. He, he might die just because he, he, out of doubt, he was not able to take a correct action. And he's going against the value of, you know, valor, value of family honor, etc. He should have taken action, he does not take action. So you know, these things you know, make him feel guilty and the guilt takes the better, better of his mind. And, and finally, Ham, uh, Hamlet is caught you know, in the web of his own psychological uh, puzzles. So uh, this, this kind of a character with, 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 a, with an independent mind, with a mind you know, that is in the process of growing, in the process of becoming aware more and more, this is something that is, uh, you know, uh, uh, Particularly uh, important for this for this play. Now, uh, the soliloquies uh, are the projections of Hamlet's mind, and they give us insights which are otherwise rare to, you know, uh, get in, in in plays of that time and even later. There is another person uh, in, in in the play who is also soliloquizing. He soliloquizes only once or twice, and that person is Claudius. Now, imagine. Uh, of course, Shakespeare will be using it, uh, it uh, to, cert to a certain extent elsewhere also. The, the, the uh, device of uh, soliloquy, he does it in, uh, for instance in uh, King Lear. But then uh, this play is, is dominated by soliloquies. And uh, the, some people you know, refer to this play uh, as a play you know, where a particular soliloquy occurs. And the, 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 there have been uh, whole articles on the soliloquies of Hamlet and particularly that soliloquy to be or not to be, that is the question. And in fact, Hamlet is going into the aspect of suicide, in the, in, uh, in, uh, in, into the aspect of uh, you know, uh, killing himself, death. He is brooding on death, 
and all and all those things. So that shows, you know, that Shakespeare has uh, somehow identified uh, a particular the emergence of a particular consciousness, which can be characterized as individual. This individual will not be seen like this uh, in plays, you know, before Ham uh, before Hamlet, uh, generally speaking. So uh, one has to, you know, uh, and th this is very modern. Most of us, you know, today are, are caught in the web of circumstances, and we start thinking. And most of us can't even act. In fact, there, there, there are there are whole branches of uh, of human behavior uh, which refer to inaction, just because one is uh, being too much theoretical. And uh, well, the, the, uh, the blame can be also put at the door of Hamlet that he is being too theoretical, and and he is using different techniques in order to avoid the action. So uh, this is a, a discourse that is there in the play. And uh, this discourse, you know, uh, for instance, uh, no soliloquy is ever available to Polonius. Polonius cannot write a soliloquy, cannot speak a soliloquy. Uh, Ophelia uh, can of some, sometimes uh, perhaps uh, speak a uh, soliloquy, but Laertes cannot. Uh, well, uh, the mother of Hamlet can uh, speak, but she doesn't. But, but then, uh, these are the characters, you know, those who suffer, th th those who are pained, they can start talking. But then, these two people very clearly come forward and talk. Anything you would like to say on this? <laughs> Sir, it is uh, definitely uh, an aspect that uh, one needs to uh, pay careful attention to and, and I am th thinking about the times that I had studied it and I had uh, probably uh, not thought about it is so much in depth about the uh, importance of soliloquies and you mentioned that it is also used in King Lear but not as effectively and not as um, say uh, the, the amount of importance that is given to it within this place. So, in fact, uh, our viewers would also be able to uh, catch this point and perhaps go back to the play which I would li also like to do, sir. Well, uh, and give it another read mm, and pay importance to these. No, aspects. The, you, you, you're right. That, uh, the, the, this this is a point that should be, of course, in Shakespeare criticism. This has been discussed, but then uh, most of us, you know, are, are remain unaware of the the, the importance of soliloquies in Hamlet in particular and other plays in general. Right. Uh, then you and know. And sir, hmm. just another idea that comes to my mind that you said that some, some are uh, not ab are able to speak. They are able to speak through these soliloquies, and some characters are not able to speak. Yes. So that uh, came as an interesting point to me, and I would just like to ask you a bit about well, that. That is your know, my feminism, you know, coming through, <laughs> <laughs> because you know women uh, have lots of pains to share with others, but they are not given a chance in in, in the Elizabethan period and later know to speak out their minds. So anybody who suffers, anybody who is feeling helpless would like to complain and sure. to whom to complain. So I, when I talked about you know some characters having the potential of speaking and, and soliloquizing, do not do so. They, they, they are both women. For instance, uh, I think there are lots of uh, uh, pains and complaints you know the, 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 that, that a person like uh, Gertrude would be. Uh, would be trying to do, but yes, but she can, yes. she doesn't have a friend to share with, and she she doesn't have that kind of you know individuality in her. If that were there, then then she would have been confused regarding marrying this person. She may not have liked this person at all when he was her brother-in-law, but now that he, he is the king, and yes. the moment he became the king, the, he proposed to her and she married him. Yes. So uh, the, 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 there must uh, and she had a grown-up uh, you know son. son. So that kind of a dilemma. She is not able to, uh, you know, uh, somehow uh, cope with. But then th th there is a uh, position, there is a there is a situation in which she might have soliloquized. Uh, Ophelia has the same problem. She is a split, a split personality. Yes. Initially, uh, she she was loved by Hamlet. Later on, she was, you know, uh, uh, she was rejected by Hamlet. Then she suffered. Then then she went mad also, and she went mad on on hearing that the father had died, all those things, and she started fantasizing and fantasizing about so many things. So I would say that uh, uh, Ophelia is closer to, uh, closer a candidate for uh, soliloquy. Because in her fantasies, which are fantasies of the mad woman, she is somehow soliloquizing. Uh, it is not soliloquy in the sense that she is talking when she is in senses, but that she is saying something which is uh, in her subconscious and, and that is coming out through her fantasies. So uh, any suppressed person, and women were suppressed all the time, they would sure. be a proper candidate for soliloquy. But Hamlet has that kind of sensitivity which is generally found in a woman. Hamlet that way, that the, the, the modesty, the softness that is there in Hamlet, 
and uh, that that is very close to a woman. So uh, I, I I I don't uh, somebody should you know also uh, uh, explore this area. What is that womanliness in Hamlet? That softness, that delicacy, uh, that, that that particular subtlety in Hamlet that is able to uh, go into these questions at the level of uh, his, his his consciousness. So viewers, uh, we have just five minutes or so left, and uh, I'll, I'll just uh, you know uh, very briefly talk about uh, the, the two or three other uh, discourses uh, in this time. Uh, generally, uh, Shakespeare's plots are quite taught, are, are quite you know strict. I mean, there, there, are, there are certain things which, which Shakespeare focuses upon. There are others you know he keeps out. But so far as this play is concerned, certain things from outside the plot also have been brought in. In order to expand the scope of, enlarge the scope of the play, and uh, th this also, you know, is, is peculiar to this play, and it's, it's the kind of a discourse. When the court is, when the people in the court, when when people of the nobility, when people around the king, they are involved in a fight, uh, in, in in a political fight, then are they aware that certain things outside their ambit also are happening? Most of them are not aware particularly at that point of time. So most plays, you know, in the, till the, in, in the Elizabethan times would be courtly fights. It uh, would, would be fights, you know, of people in the court. You have the history plays, you have other plays where, you know, the court scenes are very important and, uh, you know, people from, from different walks of life, they, they, they fight at the level of, uh, you know, the king and, and, and the administrative structure. But then here, uh, you have certain sections, you know, which have been brought in from outside to give a critical look at the at the goings on in the play, and I I, I particularly pinpoint two. Uh, one is you know the world of players. The players have been brought in out of nowhere, as it were, out of the blue. Suddenly somebody says the players are on the way, and the players come. The, 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 and, and these players were moving, uh, moving around you know the the the, the, the uh, uh, country Denmark, and uh, Hamlet was you know once many years ago when he was a young man when he was uh, 20 or so, uh, then he would, you know, uh, spend his time with these players, the, these actors, and the actors group has come forward. And then this actors group is used by Hamlet to find out uh, the, the, the truth about uh, the, the king uh, in the play that they present, which is called Mousetrap. And uh, when these players come, then Hamlet is very happy. He interacts with them, he directs the play partly, he also writes a few lines for the play that the, that they will enact you know, uh, in, 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 the, in the court, and for some time Hamlet is himself, which means most of the time he is not himself. Not himself. Most, most of the time he is performing a role. But when these actors come, come from outside, then he becomes himself. Now, see, there, there are lots of ironies in this. A person is not his real self when he is confronting the real people, but when a person con confronts the artists who are actually presenting somebody else's role, then he becomes it's real. Brilliant. So see, see the irony is, you know, uh, uh, being being created very consciously and intelligently by Shakespeare through this reference to the other world which is outside the court. And and, and the second, you know, is, is much more telling. The, the second world, you know, is uh, much more effective uh, and that is the world of grave diggers. Grave diggers uh, who are digging grave for, uh, you know, Ophelia uh, have, 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 have no knowledge of what is, what, what is going around with these people. When somebody dies, then they, they take it professionally. Uh, uh, there is a brother who will come and he will jump into the grave and these people will laugh at him. But what kind of a fool is he? And he is uh, Polonius's son, he is not an ordinary person. He is the Prime Minister's son and uh, Hamlet is fighting on the other side and Hamlet's great, greatness also disappears and evaporates in front of the grave diggers. In fact, one of the, one of the grave diggers, you know, uh, uh, digs up a, a particular part of the skeleton, the skull and uh, starts saying that the, the skull belongs to that person. They, he knew the person you know, mm -hmm. when he was alive, and Hamlet recognized, recognizes that the person whose skull it is was actually very kind to him, and he played in his lap. So imagine this world, you know, uh, from from the court, uh, from, from outside the court. This also is brought in, and uh, there is a long description of it in the play. There is a whole scene given to the grave diggers. So these two particular instances of the players who enact a play, and of the grave diggers who come from as if another world and you have a view, then uh, this is, so uh, I, I would, uh, for paucity of time, I would not be able to, you know, uh, go through the other, other things, but so I finish here. And I say that all these discourses that Shakespeare is able to bring uh, in, into the play, they add to the richness and value of this play and make this play 
outstanding in most respects. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. And certainly, as you said, of course, uh, all these elements uh, go on to enrich the play and, of course, make it very uh, pertinent and uh, to the modern times as we discussed at the beginning. So, thank you so much, sir, again for being here today. And thank you, Thanks. viewers, for watching. Have a wonderful day ahead.